Hey guys, I am starting a new project today and I'm going to be using all of these paint colors. Um, I have some DIY paint, Annie Sloan, Paint Couture of course. I'm using just different paints because I wanted a lot of different colors. Um, so I'm going to do a very, very layered, distressed finish on these two jewelry boxes. So. Painting jewelry boxes is one of my favorite things to do. So they're really cool for trying out new finishes that you've never done on furniture. Um, it's a really good way to experiment. So stay tuned. You know I'll be posting follow-up photos and videos. Hey guys, I'm still working on my little jewelry box, but I wanted to show you um, these tiny little spaces in here. I'm actually using a piece of cardboard. It's one of my favorite um, art tools actually. And I it's good for like getting the paint into these little crevices where my, um, my palette knife, I can't really get into all these little spots like I want to. Um, look how many times I've used this one piece of cardboard. I just let it dry out. It's from like a tea box, but anyway, it needs to be kind of like a pretty stiff piece of cardboard, but it's cool. It really works. Okay. So I'm almost done with this. I'm putting like the last coat on and then I'm going to sand these down. Um, but look, I added, I added copper to the top well all over actually doesn't that look cool all right stay tuned i'm having too much fun on this <laughs> okay so my jewelry box currently looks like a pollock painting which i don't hate but um this don't worry because this is not the finished look that i'm okay i'm just gonna use 120 grit sandpaper and start hand sanding these you could totally use a um you know electric sander but because these are little jewelry boxes i don't think it's necessary but if i were doing a big piece of furniture i would definitely use a um electric sander
Okay, I'm just gonna use a tack cloth and get all the dust off um, of my piece. And then we're gonna glaze, glaze it to, um, the glaze will darken up the paint colors and it will give it a bit of an aged look. So I'm gonna start with the top and I'm gonna use um, black chiffon on one and then Van Dyke on the other. I think I'm gonna do black chiffon on this one. So it's glaze couture, black chiffon. And, whoops, let me grab a chip brush, hold on. You can apply glaze with any brush, but I always use these kind of cheap brushes because you don't need a, a fancy brush at all for the glaze. You just wanna get it on really quick and um, then so you can wipe it off before it starts to get kind of tacky. Okay, so that's a good amount. And I'm trying these new, um, I think they're called glazing cloths that Paint Couture sent me. I'd never tried it, so thought I would give it, give it a try. They're basically like really thick paper towels, it seems. Um, oh yeah, it looks cool. Just gave it a nice little patina. Make sure you get all your edges. Yeah, I like it. So I'm going to just go over this little section right here with some of the glaze that's on here. And that'll probably darken it up enough. Yeah. Okay, and the little drawers, I'm going to take them out. Because you don't want the glaze getting in those crevices. This drawer keeps wanting to stick. gonna have a little music. <laughs> My jewelry box started playing and I don't exactly, let me try to turn it off. <laughs> I don't know because I took the drawer out. Oh well, we'll just have to hear it. It's not a bad sound. Okay, more plays and I'm gonna kind of be careful not to get any on the inside. You want to lift the little handles up. Most jewelry boxes, it's really difficult to get the hardware off. So a lot of times I just work around it, which is not a big deal. You just want to make sure to lift it up and get underneath it. And, um, you know, so you have a consistent look to it. Let's see, I'm gonna keep using this and just fold it a little more. It's kind of cool. I think it's good, because, especially for this, because you can get into these little grooves pretty well. But I'm gonna kind of leave some of it, because it makes sense for the crevices to be a little bit darker. I could wear gloves, but this glaze is, it's really harmless. It's water-based, um, and I can just wash it off of my hands pretty easily.
I like the glaze kind of settling around the hardware too. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. So you can kind of see, not a huge difference, but it, it does darken it up and it adds some um, aged, you know, kind of distressed look to it. And I'm going to leave that like that because I kind of like it. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing on all the drawers and then the rest of the jewelry box for this one. And then I will show you guys um, what I do with the... Um, I'm going to do the same technique, but I'll show you how the Van Dyke, which is a brown glaze, how it looks different. Okay, so we're going to use Van Dyke Glaze Couture on this one, which is like a deep brown it's really pretty so again the glaze is just gonna tone down the colors and kind of make everything darker give it some more depth And I'm going to use the um, glazing pad on this one. And for these kind of small spots, I'm going to use a foam brush. I put more on the side and I can already tell I like more. So I'm probably going to go back and put another coat on the top. So when you have tight little spots, you can use the foam brush to kind of pull it. Because it would be hard for me to get this in here and get like a smooth pull of pulling off the glaze then you can go down here and pull it up and it's really good for these little little spots too and then here sometimes you might have to offload your foam brush a little bit and then you can pull off more but I like that I yeah, I'm going to do a little bit heavier on the top um, the next go round. So, you can, if you take off too much glaze, you can, um, you can just add another coat on top. So, I'm going to do my little, I took the drawers out, and I'll do those separately. I want to make sure to get this little lip right here. When you glaze, you just have to really be careful to get all of your spots because you will, if you miss a spot, you'll definitely see it once you're done. It's not a big deal because you can just go back and glaze it, but might as well just kind of be more meticulous so you won't have to do it again. Okay, I'm going to use the same foam brush. I'm going to kind of offload it a little bit in between. Yeah, I like that. Just darkened it up a bit. It kind of brought the whole, um, kind of made it more cohesive looking. Okay. And I need to wait for my other side to dry so that I can do that one. Now I can do my little drawers.
We'll have to see which one I like best. I don't know. Might, uh, not sure. They probably won't look extremely different. The black and the Van Dyke. Because these are, these little drawers and little boxes are pretty small. So it's, okay. Yeah, you definitely, the foam brush is a good tool for these, for sure. I switched to another, a clean brush. And remember, you can leave the glaze where you want to leave it, like around that hardware. I want to leave a little in that down there. Yeah, I think that looks good. So you can see the difference. I'll just do this one and then I'll do the rest and show you guys the two when I'm finished. So we can see which ones we like best or just in general how they look different.